It is difficult for historians to ignore the significance of these missions. As Young, Silcock, and Dunn state on page 257 of their book, Journey to Tranquility, written in 1969, Altogether, the orbiters photographed virtually the entire surface of the moon, showing details down to about 100 yards across. These pictures now provide almost as detailed a survey of the lunar topography as is available for the Earth itself. The orbiters also photograph potential landing sites and areas of particular scientific interest with high-resolution cameras capable of picking up details a hundred times smaller still than those on a general survey. New York Times aerospace reporter John Noble Wilford also wrote about the lunar orbiters, or as he deemed them, unmanned pathfinders. On pages 75, 76, and 77 of his book, We Reached the Moon, he tells us, This was Apollo's area of interest, the zone where astronauts would land, and Apollo planners wanted it completely mapped with detailed photography. All five lunar orbiters were successful. The photographic system built by the Eastman Kodak Company incorporated a wide-angle lens and a telephoto lens. The camera shutters operated simultaneously so that each exposure produced two pictures, one a medium-resolution shot, the other a high-resolution shot. In a medium-resolution picture, objects 8 yards square, about the size of a boxing ring, showed up clearly. The high-resolution lens picked out details as small as the top of a card table. On February 8, 1967, the third orbiter began re-examining the most promising Apollo sites, taking overlapping pictures to get a three-dimensional effect that would bring out the contours of the surface. It is interesting to note that the leader of all propagandists, Jay Windley, apparently agrees with us when it comes to the significance of the lunar orbiter photographs. When writing about the inaccuracies in Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey, Windley states, The lunar landscape is wrong. Kubrick shows us sharp pointed mountains even though high-definition close-range photographs from Lunar Orbiter 2, 1966, showed the rounded mountains familiar in Apollo photographs. Armstrong has studied the maps. He knows every crater, every rock. Quite clearly, NASA already knew what the lunar landscape looked like long before they launched Apollo 11 there. And photogrammetry was nothing new in 1966. It is a technique used to measure the distances between two points so as to determine the geometric features of an object. Consider also that the lunar orbiters took multiple images of the same location, which would enable anyone to make stereo images of the area and use stereo photogrammetry to uncover the 3D characteristics of the topography. So, if NASA wanted to accurately fake the lunar landscape seen in the moonwalk pictures, they could have easily modelled their sets on the topography depicted in the images obtained from the lunar orbiter. They wouldn't have needed to wait until Cellini was launched to know what the terrain looks like. The two images from Jackstra and NASA look indeed very similar. But upon closer inspection, there are significant differences. Look closely as we switch the images. The hilltops in the background are higher in the Cellini image, especially the tiny hill in the top right of the screen.
And by far the most prominent difference of them all is the horizon of the foreground, which the lunar rover is parked on. It is clearly much higher in the Apollo image. Not only that, but also the Apollo image depicts the horizon running near completely horizontal from left to right. The JAXA image, however, shows a tremendous dip in the horizon's horizontalness. So, if we are looking at two 100% accurate images of the same location, why are there significant differences taken 36 years apart? How can the mountaintops grow and shrink between two images? Especially on a geologically extinct moon. The Japanese also released a digital elevation model of the Apollo 17 landing site. They claim that the JAXA and Apollo images are the same, but they just aren't. Look closely. The hills are much higher in the Apollo 17 photograph. There are significant differences, yet those peddling these images say they are exactly the same. It seems although NASA had a good idea of what the train looked like, they weren't perfect with their models. But most astonishing of all, in the later releases of the same Japanese picture, the horizon has been elevated and straightened to match up with the Apollo image. And here I thought only NASA censored their pictures. Then again, JAXA is one of NASA's international partners. The Americans recently installed a Japanese laboratory on the International Space Station for them. Even if they manage to get the horizon to match up, the hills still grow and shrink between shots. How long do you suppose before the Japanese censor that anomaly too? <laughs>